<laughs> but guess where I'm going to go with this one? So we might start that one all over, all over again. <laughs> A UDF is an urban design framework and it's a document that outlines an urban design vision, urban design principles and then urban design objectives for how a project can be arranged in a way to actually be fully integrated within an urban environment, so a town, a city or a precinct. For inland rail, there are parts of the project that will sit within uh, the towns that the rail corridor runs through. So it's really important for those parts of the project to actually uh, be integrated in a very sympathetic way and ensure that the people that live and work in these towns can continue to do so in a really satisfactory way. Every part of inland rail that travels through a town, there will be slightly different requirements or priority from an urban design perspective. So if we take an example such as Glen Rowan, the rail corridor there runs through one of Victoria's most significant um, historical precincts, thanks to a chap called Ned Kelly. So the project there will really need to consider how it will contribute to the historical environment or heritage environment that has been protected there for a really long time and how it might even further contribute as an element of that tourist experience that people have when they are in Glen Rowan as well. So that's somewhat different to a place, say, like Wangaratta, which is a much bigger town, and uh, the rail corridor there sits between the town centre on one side and the uh, health precinct on the other. So really trying to ensure that walking and cycling is a legitimate way for people to get around safely and conveniently, that will probably be the priority there. There's plenty of project examples in the past where uh, community input has uh, shaped the detailed design of a project, uh, particularly in, in relation to transport projects. The level crossing removal at Carrum was quite an extensive project and quite an extensive amount of community feedback related to the identity of Carrum and its seaside location, which really influenced the way that not just the colours and materials that were selected to kind of reflect that beachside vibe, if you like, but also uh, in the way that people wanted to use the spaces around the town centre there. So an urban design framework really sort of sits at a high level, so high level vision, principles and objectives. And they're expressed that way so that they can provide everyone with some confidence around what the outcomes will be like, but at the same time provide enough flexibility within the project for the design team to actually innovate and be creative with the way that they undertake the detailed design. Having said all of that, something that communities are really interested in is making their towns and uh, precincts better. And that often uh, includes uh, adding new things so with this type of project, what is in scope is making sure that the aspirations for a town are always accommodated and facilitated and never precluded. So the way that the infrastructure will be arranged, located, and then the detailed design undertaken, making sure that all those other plans for those places uh, can happen. Mm -hmm.